Hi John. Hi everyone. Doing good. How about you? Good. All right. Okay. All right. So I was saying all my computers are out of disk space. So this could be interesting. Um, let's see. Wait. <clears throat> all right. Okay. We got everything on here. Let's bring up to medium minutes. So Natesh, did you see did you see what was going on with that um the H two O model? Yeah, I think you have merged that H two O, right? I commented back and so I did that a little bit. That was that was I was too eager to to merge that. <laughs> so let's see. Um, there were some issues with it. I merged it. Basically, it wasn't enabled in the CI. I merged it, found out it wasn't enabled in the CI. Some issues happened. Um, basically, you, you, you'll need to reopen a pull request on that one because it was I wasn't able to, to, to I had to revert it um, because the CI, the tests weren't passing uh, in the CI. So, um, we'll, we'll, let's see. Okay, yeah, you have commented here. Yeah. to reopen the PR. Yeah, so I, mean, I think the main issue here was was both of those. I, I hadn't, I hadn't wait. I thought that it was up to date with master when I merged it, and it wasn't. And so I then we had issues. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll just have to redo it and make, and make sure it's up to date with master. And I think you'll you'll see you'll see what the what the CI issue was. So, um, yeah. okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Let me make sure. All right. Hey, Yeah, I'm sorry, Sudhancho. I just went to look at your PR last night, but then I had to I had to do some other stuff. I've got a, it was, uh, I had uh, I have this meeting that I run this morning that I had to had to do some stuff on. Um, so I haven't gotten to that yet, but I will I will review it. I will probably review it after this meeting because um, that we need to get that through. Um, I think that's looking you know very very close to done there. So, all right. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay. Um, all right, so what do we got today? Natesh, uh, what do you got going? Mm, actually, I wanted to know about the HTTP uh, thing to run the uh, Python example. Okay. Right. There is an issue. What is this? Uh, is this the Python client example? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Figures. <laughs> yeah. In a, in a service HTTP, uh, the Python example needs to update it. The issue yeah. number nine six three, I think. Yeah. 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 This this code. So how to run this? And there are some problems in uh, this particular code. So yeah. Oh, there are some. some... So these yeah. are just straight up that will not work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, and I think we had an issue. Yeah. To to go fix this. So, um, yeah. you know, why was this so? Oh, this one wasn't confusing. It was the JavaScript one that was the one that was um, that was uh, going to be more difficult. Um, okay. 
Okay, yeah, this should not be, this should be pretty straightforward for us to make this, this testable. Um, Sweet service Python client example is not fun. Okay. Uh, anything else on your end there? Mm, about the unit test dot mock uh, okay. in my previous PR. I mean, how to uh, write a test for that? Cool. Yeah, that we can go over that. Yeah. Um, I have read this a uh, lot more thing about this unit dot mock, but uh, didn't clear what what we are doing. And yeah. I mean, how can we do that? That, that's a good yeah. one to go over as as a, as a team here because that's a, it's it's it, it's definitely can be tricky um, the first time. So, all right. Uh, anything else there, or is that it? No, no, no. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um. So, uh, Hashim. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, so I've made some progress on the confidence issue, uh, separating out the confidence oh, uh, from with the predictions, yeah. So uh, I've just started to uh, deal with the sources uh, in respect to that issue. All right. Uh, but uh, I'm not uh, uh, really that sure uh, how, uh, how to deal with it. Okay. Uh, anything else on your in there? Uh, no, that's it. All right, great. Saksham? Uh, yeah, I'm just here to see what everyone's been up to. Great, great. Um, and we, let's see, we, we figured out when, when we last talked, um, did we have a path forward? We had a path forward, right? Uh, yeah, for the config stuff. Yeah, okay, I haven't yeah. touched it yet. All right, just have last time. Yeah, okay, sounds yeah. good. Great. Um, uh, let me just write that in the notes that we so we have a path forward on the config stuff. Did I send you? Did I send you the recording that we did of the last little bit of that? Can't remember. Um, I think I think not. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let me just check here real quick. Um, uh, no, you didn't send that. Oh damn! What did I do with it, that? Oh shit! Oh, oh okay. yes, you added it in the doc. Oh, I added it to the doc. Okay, great, great, yeah, great. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I swear, I put it somewhere. All right, okay. Um, all right, and then Sudhanshu, is there? Uh, so, is there anything else that you'd want to talk about, um, or just, just see? Uh, uh, yeah, I had I like like now right now like I'm trying to uh like understand about data flow. Okay. So I have actually taken up an issue. Like I want to work on this issue number. Okay. Uh, six sixty. Okay. So like I had to discuss about it. Okay. Cool. All right. Anything I missed on the agenda here, from anyone? All right. Great. All right. Um, all right. So um, let's see. Let's look at this. Um, okay. Um, this unit test mock. Oh, great. That's right. Okay. I have no. Um, I have no disk space. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, let's let's do this one. So why don't you pop open a terminal and we can uh, we can you know walk through this, Nitesh. Okay. Okay.
Invisible. All right. Yep. I just forgot the name. <laughs> so the file is in BFML slash YouTube. This is the file, right? Yes, this looks like it. Yeah. yeah. So, All right. Where's okay. the function? Yeah, where's the, the cache down there? Is this no this is test no this is uh we need to be in uh test util test net mm, okay yes yes Cache download, yes, this thing. Let me shut numbers. All right. <clears throat> okay, so. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and let's, can you pull up the patch side by side so everybody can see what we're testing here? The, mm -hmm. the, the, um, yeah or I guess your changes. So just DFML util net. Again, I need to open it. Uh, no, the, the file that, that has the implementation. So DFML slash util slash net dot PY. Sorry, VI DFML slash, okay, you need to go up, um, up to the root dot, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, now vi dfml slash util slash net. Okay, so. All right, great. So let's go down to where you did the changes. All right, so just as a recap yes. for everyone. So what Natasha was doing here was we uh, we had an issue where basically um, if there's any sort of failure um, on the unpack, so we download the file, we validate the contents, we extract it, um, and so let's see. Uh, okay, not directory. Is there... Uh, make their extract download path directory path. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, if if basically we download the contents of this archive, we extract it, we create the directory, we distract extract it into the directory, um, and then once once we've done that, um, we 
yeah, we extract it, and then then the problem here is, if there's an error on extraction, then the path still exists, and we ended up in this state where we didn't, you know, that you end up with this empty directory, um, and so that that was just, you know, we don't want that, right? Then then we think that there's a directory, and there's not, and there's no contents in there. So, the the goal of this patch, this PR, is to um, you know remove remove the directory if it doesn't exist or if if there's no if we fail to extract so there's no contents in there um so we had this try accept block um and then we do this rm tree and there's this little error handler in there that that's something about windows what was the background on that this yeah, has to do with it's not writable for some reason and so you make it writable and then you try again yes Nitesh, that's what's going on here. So basically, you said there was there something about Windows or something. I can't remember what you said, but basically, yeah, yeah, it's it's Windows error, uh, okay. something like permi permission denied, right? Okay, yeah, and so basically, you you have these read only files for some reason, and then uh, they get created read only, and so you have to chmod them to be writable, and then you can then you can continue the the removal. Um, yes. So uh, we don't need that else block there. Um, just just that's something that we should get rid of else pass that's a you know a nothing block yes. right there um so let's great um all right so now now what i was saying here was okay let's try to test this rm tree thing you know to make sure that there's no that there's no um or let's 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 test this thing that we did right so we want unpack archive to fail so that rm tree gets called right and that the directory is now no longer there right so this is a, this is the test case we're trying to write right now so let's flip over to that 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 test file okay and let's copy paste that that function at the end that test cache download unpack archive so this is the you know this this verifies that we extracted, um, you know this this tries to it, it creates a download, um, and uh, so can you copy paste this block? This last function, right? Yeah, copy paste that last function, and then we'll re rename it to um, failure okay. or something. You know, so test cache download on pack archive failure is what we'll call it or something, something like that. You know. Mm, it's done, I think. Yeah. All right. So, can you rename it to have like a underscore failure at the end or something? All right. Great. So, um, there's a few things going on here, obviously, um, but what we're most concerned about is the um, is is. Okay, so let me just give some yeah, brief explanation. Yeah, so <clears throat> so we are actually going to uh, we don't need to worry about verify extracted contents because there's not going to be any extracted contents. Um, so what we do need to do is we do need to await funk, um, <laughs> and so so let's let's think of, let's just think about the flow here so so the existing code sets up this test server and if you go up to the top of the file you'll see that the the test server basically just creates this archive.tar.gz um, and it creates it with the contents that this verify extracted contents function uh, expects um, so and you'll see that that yeah so that verify extracted contents basically this thing it creates a tar file in memory um, this verify extracted content says, okay, you know, I expect there to be a directory. I expect there to be a file that says hello in that directory. It says world. And I expect there to be a binary file that says, um, you know, dead and it has beef in it. Um, and so uh, let's see. Yeah. So, so that that's, and then if you look into the, the, the function that is the HTTP server handler, you'll see how it creates an archive in memory. Um, that that's not really important for this. So the point here is that we want to make sure that this thing blows up um, when we try to unpack the archive. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to have, we want to use the unit test dot, dot mock uh, library to have the unpack archive function 
unit test dot mock can change things under where you use it in a width block and then anything that happens under that width block you're modifying the behavior of, of the function that you asked unit test dot mock to change so in this case we want um in this case we want uh the unpack archive function to raise an exception right because that will trigger our rm tree block and then we can verify that you know there is no directory path right um so does that make sense Yep. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's go into our new function here. Yes, this one. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so async def func extracted return extracted. Okay. Great. Um, so, and that's just our, our dummy little test handler func function, right? So usually we we usually we use this decorator on top of some kind of function to provide it with you know the extracted archive, um, and we are not going. You know, we we don't. We're, it, this thing is never going to get called in this case because you know it's going to blow up. Um, so we can actually go on that func. So async def func on line one nineteen. That return extracted. Yes. Let's actually just make that pass instead of return, right? Yeah. And let's see what is our. I think we want our no cov pragma. Let's see where's the coverage file? Yeah. So let's say. Um, oops. So now let's put a comment on the same line as pass. And this says, so do, uh, it, it do insert mode. Um, so do pass space comma, and then, uh, sorry, not comma, um, uh, uh, pound sign and then space pragma colon no space cov and if you look at the dot coverage rc file i'm not going to make this open it right now uh sorry pragma colon space no space cov cov all right great so now this if you look in the dot coverage rc file you'll notice that um uh, there should be space there yeah thanks all right so if you look in the coverage rc file we don't have to look now but you'll notice that if it, it has a ignore list and it, it sees this comment on a line it's going to ignore this line and so since we're never going to call the we're never going to call this function because it's going to throw an error we want to put pragma no cov here um because or else coverage is going to be like, well, why didn't you call this? You know, you should be covering this line. And we're, we don't want it to, right? It's never going to. Uh, we just have to define the function so that we have something for the for the cache download on Pike Archive decorator to call. Okay, so let's go to the bottom of this function here. Mm -hmm. uh, are we at the very bottom? Okay, great. So, um, all right, so we need to call funk, right? Um, but we're going to call funk and, uh, well, let's first... First, actually, yeah, let's call func first. So try doing an await func. Okay. And below await func, do, let's see, so where's that verify extracted content? So check out that verify extracted contents function. It's. All right. So yeah, so it says assert true is dir, right? So we want to do, we want an assert true block and okay, we're going to do extracted and we're going to, you know, check, check if this thing is to directory, but we're just going to check for extracted. So, um, we can, we can, uh, we, let's go all the way down. Right. So we want to basically do the opposite of that. Right. We want to make sure that this thing is not there. Right. Um, when we're done with this function. So we want to do a assert false, you know, self dot assert false. And then we want to do that archive. So it's that path lib dot path tempter slash archive. Just. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, wait, no, go all the way down. It's the third argument to cache download on pack archive. No, it's the third this, argument. This. The, no, not that one. Oh, it's the third. Uh, no, all the way down. Go all the way down. It's the third argument to cache download on pack archive on line 115. Oh, nine. Okay. Yeah, right. So we want to make sure that this thing doesn't exist, right? This is 
this is this is our test case, right? We call the function, we make sure this directory does not exist because right now this directory will exist. You know, before if we ran this before your patch, this directory would exist, right? This is the bug that we're fixing. So let's copy, you know, co copy that and put it in that assert false there. So yeah, you want assert false, and then you want that. Yeah, great. So expected. Oh no, this should be. This. Uh, let's see. Yes. Great. Yeah. You. Yep. That is exactly what we want. Okay. So now, if we try to do this, let's see. So we. Okay. So in this current situation, obviously, this is going to uh, fail because that's going to exist, right? So what we want to do is we want to add a little. We want to add two width blocks around a weight func. The first width block we want to add is the. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order we add them in, but. I'm going to do this with unit test dot mock. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me pull up the docs because I want to show you guys the whole process of how to do this because this is a really important way to write tests. Um, okay. What is that? Raise. I look this up every time. Patch. Yeah, I think it's a side effect. All right, yeah. All right, great. Um, unit test mark. All right, let's pull, pull open the documentation for unit test. Um, where is it? Yeah, unit test dot mock. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So <clears throat> there's this patch function that basically says, all right, this is this is the thing that we're mocking, right? So we're going to import, we'll make sure that this is imported. And if you go down here a little bit, let's see, go down a little bit more. All right, you can see, yeah, so this thing, this syntax here. So with patch the object, you know, and say the return value will be one or none, right? And this is the kind of thing that, that we're doing here. So not that, it's not the, uh, the one above that is really the one that's that's more interesting to us. The example above that where we have that with patch.object produ production class method return value. This is the type of thing that we're interested here when we're using unit test mock, you know, for the most part. Um, and there's lots of examples for the test, right? But but this is something that, that we care about. So yeah, why don't we copy that and we'll flip over back to the test. So you add that width block there. Yeah, we already have unit test on mock. So we don't need to import that. We just need that width block. All right, great. So now we want to patch the, and so we don't have to have it imported. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do it well on something you've imported, which is the way that it works right now, patch.object, or you can do it on something that's just a string. So we just need to change this to with unit test.mock.patch and then get rid of that dot object. And it's unit test.mock.patch. Oops, 
me. Uh, get rid of the dot object there, because the dot object says I'm doing this on a, you know, on an instance of something, and that production class is an instance of production class. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to do shutil dot unpack archive where method is. So in that string that method right there. So method, the string that is method right now will be the first argument, and the contents of the string will be shutil dot unpack archive, and that says to unit test mock patch. It says I want you to patch the shutil.unpackArchive function. And we're going to make it raise an error. And then we'll see when we run this test that it's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the first parameter is a function name, right? The first parameter is a string that is the name of the function, and the, the, we're including the module, the full path. So shutil.unpackArchive. So, so the function name is? Uh, it's, it's, well, so it's shutil.unpackArchive, because that is the function that we want to make raise an exception, right, so that we can trigger that try accept block. Dot archive. Unpack archive. Unpack underscore archive. Is anybody not following what we're doing here? It's okay if, if anyone is not following. Does anybody have any questions right now? Okay. Um, so yeah, so then remove that method and remove the return value equals none, right? Because we don't want to set the return value. All right, so right now we have some, we have a call that says, okay, Hey, patch shutil.unpackArchive and make it some kind of mock thing, right? And basically mock the mock library will go through and, and do some tricks and, and sort of make it so you can call this thing and it won't do anything, right? Um, and so what we wanted to do, though, is we wanted to raise a value so we can pass. And if we go over to the documentation, you'll find this, but it might... It's not, let's see, so if, there's, if you go to the documentation, you'll look there, see, if you scroll down, you'll see return value, and under return value, you'll see side effect. And side effect is an exception that it's going to raise. Um, yeah. So we can say um, side effect, yeah, perfect. So we can say side effect equals exception, and then it'll raise an exception. Um, yeah, and if you scroll down further, you'll see it exactly. So usually, usually things like return value are the most helpful here. And, and there's some, there's some, I think the most elaborate examples within our test cases are, yeah, so copy paste that and, and let's see what, see, see, watch what happens here. The most elaborate examples of the usages of mock that we have, um, I believe are, um, are, uh, are in test service to test dev. Side effect equals exception. Great. Yeah. All right. So now, and you don't need that as moth mock method in this instance because we're not going to actually do anything to that. Um, so that that's more useful, you know, if you're trying to make sure, like the other examples that are in there, that it's called as something. So let indent that await funk and let's watch this thing explode. Because that's this is the way. This is just a, a common way that I like to write these tests. Is I like to watch the test fail first, right? Because then I know, I know, I know that the test is passing on purpose if I see the test fail once, right? Okay, so let's indent this block here, and then let's run the test. All right. You can open a new terminal or something there. Net. I think you can pass dash K to it and it will, um, yeah, there you go. Boom. Blew up. Perfect. All right. And where is that? So in, yes, it went, you see that, that third line up and it said unpack archive and then it blew up and it raised the exception. So that's exactly what we wanted. It's failing now. Right. So, um, oh, wait a minute. Unpack archive extractor call raise exception. 
Yeah. Okay. I think this is what we want. Um, let's let's find out. Let's go. Let's go finish the test case. Um, I'm not seeing it raised from the other exception, which is what what it should have happened there. Um, but I think this is the test file. Mm. All right. Okay. So now all we want to do is we want to say. Okay, so so now we want to add a little block that says with assert raises. So within this block, now we want to say, okay, we're raising the exception. Now that exception that we raised should trigger a further exception that says directory failed to extract error, right? So we want to make sure that that exception is getting raised. So now we want to enter with block here that says with assert self that assert raises whatever your error is self.assert raises. Okay. Raises with an S at the end. There's an S. S. Wait, so sorry, there's an there's it's assert raises. R A I S. Yeah, there you go. And then so what is that exception that you raise, right? Because you're you you no as. There's no as here. It's just just call the function, yeah. The directory not found. Yeah, right. directory not found. Error. Exactly. Yeah. So we want to make sure that that thing, yeah, directory not extracted error. We want to make sure that this thing's getting raised, right? Yes. And then we indent that, right? And then we make sure that hey, no, we don't. But we don't indent that block, right? Because we want to make sure that we call the function. It can't extract the directory, and then once it couldn't extract the directory, the arc, the you know, the the, the place isn't there. So in, indent func, don't indent the other one. All right, okay, and then make that assert raises a, a function call that passes directory not extracted error, and then we've successfully. This is how we write a unit test mock test. Um, What, what need to change? This is assert raises is a function call. Assert raises. Okay, it's a function. Yeah. It's no, you passing, you're passing directory not extracted error as the first argument of assert raises. It's just like assert true or assert false, it's a function. This thing? Yes. And pass okay. pass directory not extracted error as an argument to assert raises. Mm -hmm. So just delete okay. delete the end close paren and the period and put it at the end. Okay. Just it just close paren there, and replace the dot you have. Okay. All right. Well, okay. You just put a close parenthesis here. Just a close parenthesis. All right. And now replace the dot that's immediately before directory not extracted. Okay. okay. Run the test. Great. All right. And this is our completed example. And then now we'll move on. Um, so this is how we wrote. This is how we write a unit test mock test. And this is. So this should be correct. If this is not working, then then we need to look at this further. But we'll look at it offline. Yeah. Okay, so you'll need to import this, right? But this is how we do it, just for reference. Um, and now, now we all know how to do that because I think we have not been writing enough tests, so I wanted to make sure that we we cover that completely. All right, um, great, cool. So, so I'm going to let you work with that offline, um, and then and then uh, and we can circle. You can ping me offline if you still if you still want to need more help with that. Um, but otherwise, we're going to move on now. Um, so. Um, and then the HTTP service example, I will cover that uh, offline because that was something that was on my list of to-dos anyways. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, so Hashim, what is the, um, what's, what's the issue um, with the conference breakup stuff that you're currently on? Okay. Thanks. 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 Yeah, of course. Uh, I've been able to separate uh, confidence from fiction and uh, handle most of the tests. Uh, tests that were failing afterwards uh, as a result. Mm -hmm. 
I've just started to uh, look into the tests that are failing uh, related to the sources. And uh, I think it would uh, really help if uh, yeah, you give me a lead uh, as to how uh, it might be impacting the sources and okay. uh, what might need to be fixed. Cool. Um, you Do you have a branch that's up to date that we can pull down and look at? Do you, have a, do you have a branch that we can look at? Um, I haven't uh, pushed the most recent changes. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, you can uh, still pull that, uh, the, the one from my PR. Okay, let's see. I haven't seen the PR. Um, it's oh, quite uh, buggy, oh. though. <laughs> So, okay, so this has this the source issues in question? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So let's pull this down, yeah. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. All of these machines are... Okay. Oh, no. Everyone just saw my password. Fuck. Okay. God damn it. Now I got to strip that from the recording. Change my fucking password. God damn it. All right, okay. Um... <clears throat> Great. Good job. Good job, John. Leave your password in the Tmux window. All right. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. Let me get this other other computer up here, and I will share on the screen. <clears throat> Just barely a little bit more disk space on this machine. Um, yes, all right, great. So, um, let's see how many more passwords I can display here in one meeting. All right, good, check out confidence. All right, and what can we look at a specific test that's failing? Uh, the one with the sources. Okay. Uh, I fixed the other ones, I just have to push it. Source test a source. He had a confidence. Okay, yeah, the CSV source is exactly the one that I was thinking of yesterday. Okay, yeah. So I'm going through the CSV source right now, and I'm. Um, the issues that were brought up, um, you guys probably saw them, but but there was issues brought up around, um, um, what is it called? Um, oh, yeah, that guy, Alex, he, he, said, um, he said something about, um, um, oh, yeah, there's a bug. There's a bug in, in the way that we're, we're doing the, the CSV source, um, and it made me think about how we have this. Let me, I'll just open it and show you. Um, all right, so, all right, so these guys, CSV headers. So basically, this is the issue you're running into, is that um, in the CSV file, the way we were storing the, the, the confidence, we were storing the, the prediction and the confidence by prefacing the values with these prediction underscore or the prefacing the column names or you know the names that they were stored in that predictions oh, yeah. dictionary is 
prediction underscore and confidence underscore. So what you're going to need to do here is you probably need to see like, and this is the loading. So basically we're saying, okay, if you have both a prediction and confidence or something like that, yeah, I think, yeah. So if you have the prediction, you have the confidence, then, you know, set the value and the confidence within that dictionary, right? That is the predictions dictionary. Um, we don't want to do that anymore though. Uh, we basically, I think we're going to just throw, I would say throw out the confidence for now. Um, and we can evaluate what to do with that later. Um, just set the prediction. Um, and let's see, where's prediction field names? Yeah. So file write out items, get all feature names. Yeah. So you're just going to need to work with the CSV source here. And I would say just throw out confidence for now. Um, and we can decide how we want to deal with that later. Uh, I think we may want to add, like, we may want to explicitly have the CSV force source say, we'll probably modify the CSV source later to store confidences explicitly. Otherwise, we'll store the prediction. Oh, okay, now I'm realizing that. I'm realizing now that if we, we if we store predictions, we don't know which is a prediction, which is a feature anymore. Um we should probably add, and this is this is and this is how we would do it for confidence too. We probably need to add something to the config here to say, um, you know, these are your prediction values, right? So uh, something something like, you know, predictions is a you know a list of strings, and uh, you know. It needs to default to none uh, because you can't default to an empty list. Um, oh, well, you can default to an empty list. Yeah, you can do field and then default factory equals lambda. Yeah, okay. So, um, this is this is what you'd need to do, right? You set predictions, and you say, okay, the uh, columns to be treated as predicted values rather than features, and then you do the same thing for confidence, right? To treat it as confidence values. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So you'll just need to sort of sort of massage that until it works. Um, all right. Great. Um, all right. Um, great. Okay. So uh, where did? Oh, there's the notes. Uh, running. It's funny. Yeah, I just ran into that the other day. I was like, oh god, Shame's gonna have to. Do with this, and uh, well, you know, easy fix, easy enough fix, so be fine. Um, and into issue with prediction or CSV source storing predictions and confidences prefixed with. Uh, Uh, fix is to add uh, properties CSV source to explicitly set um, column names names to be treated as predictions and confidences. Uh, when reading. All right. Um, all right, great. So, anything else on your end, Sakshan, or uh, Hashim? Uh, no, thank you. That was it. Uh, I'll try it out and uh, get back to you. All right, great. <laughs> All right, so and then let's take a look at this data flow stuff. So, um, so six sixty. Uh, yes, in that, like, I was actually trying to 
find oh, some uh -huh. issues to work with data flows. So I think like this is the best place to start. This is a meta issue. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes. So I was thinking like, uh, like I was, I, I actually read a lot about data flows, mm -hmm. but I'm still like not very confident like how I should. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I could totally, totally understandable. Um, okay. So let's see. So, yeah, the idea here, we have a lot of test files right now for data flows. We don't have a lot of examples. Um, and so that's sort of, you know, where, where this is coming in. Um, and, and I think that, you know, mainly what we want to do here is, is add a bit of a thing under, you know, tutorials and then data flows, right? And just build out this, um, this area here, right? Um, and I think that that You're so a oh, I'm sharing a different screen. Thank you, thank you. Wrong computer. Um, all right. So this 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 tutorial section here under data flows, um, and so for example, let's see, this is the I/O stuff. Well, I think this is actually this is actually this tutorial here. Um, so this one is you know, well, this is, this one is good. This one's already done. So, but um, okay, yeah. So let's see. Um, edit feature. Um, yeah, this one didn't we use this? This this one is also sort of covered. Um, the main thing that I think we need to do here with regards to data flow is cover the different syntaxes that are available, um, and uh, but to sort of just you know provide small examples around each of them. And I think this is a good so this is a good example of, of how you would do one of these syntaxes. Um, this ends up getting used in, what was this, the flower demo, right? Sakshan, this gets used here. I yeah. Believe. Yeah. Um, where is this? Associate definition, no, get single spec. What was it? Yeah, and I don't know. I think we would be good to do some more Python demos of this um, of the data flow stuff too. So, let's see. Python demos will be easier uh, yeah. when compared to the C11s, and they'll be faster to make. Yeah, yeah, and so so yeah, because you can probably take a lot of this stuff is already in the tests too. So yeah, a good way to approach this, I think, would be to go through look at the tests that exist um, that that instantiate data flows and uh, sort of pull out the content from the tests into an example file and then from that example file run that um, you know using the uh, run that example file using the using the console test stuff um, and so actually let's see well, well, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that is going to be helpful here is, um, okay, so I recently added this. Um, so yeah, we'll do literal includes and stuff. And then where did this go? Okay, so usually the, the, um, the, okay, I think I need to document this too. Um, where did that go? Test talk strings? No. Tutorials? No, this isn't it. Test docs. Test console test. All right, so this is the console testing stuff. Um, so this is a list of files that don't need um, a virtual environment. So we can just run them sort of very quickly because uh, so the, the way that most of these tests works is they assume that, you know, okay, you, you went and you installed a fresh virtual environment, which is, I think we mentioned that we ended up mentioning, ended up mentioning that in the docs. I think tutorial says, 
you know, yeah, tutorials are best approached by creating a new virtual environment. Um, so most of, all the tutorials assume that you've done this every time. Um, so, but that takes time because this goes and runs virtual. First of all, creating a virtual environment takes time. Installing and updating pips, setup tools, and wheels, and installing DFML takes time. So uh, instead, if you want to sort of do short a shortcut on this and have a faster uh, test and build and test cycle, you add it to this no setup here. Um, and this is doing a list of list of paths that don't need a uh, don't need that uh, sort of extra extra stuff. And for example, this guy. Um, this is this double context entry stuff that we covered. So this doesn't need any extra setup, right? This is all standard stuff from the standard standard um, or, or the base package, right? Um, so that that is how you're going to accelerate your your build and test cycle there. Um, and let's see, yeah. So and then beyond that, you know, um, Git grep is going to be your friend here. Um, Git grep is always your friend. This is great. Git grep is great. Um, So let's see. Test integration, operation, data flow, uh, DF create. I think, uh, where else is good to look? Um, yeah, and the other problem you're going to run into here is is you're going to see stuff from all over, um, like all over our history of various wrappers around you know what we had as data flows. Um, Okay, there's some stuff that I had in mind that I really wanted to see um, recently. I'm trying to think of it. So, okay, searching for data flow in this project is a bad idea. Um, I actually search for data flows in the document. Oh, yeah. Yes, because like I was trying to read upon some documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just get a million results. Um, let's see. So where is you know, there is this one that actually I'd really like to see this done. Um, and this is a pretty good data flow demo. Um, and I was almost done with this. Um, so where'd it go? Um, there was an ice cream sales demo, I guess. The ice cream sales demo is 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 could be a good one. Um, that one's actually that yeah that could be a really good place to start with this. Um, so, the ice cream sales demo, I believe we covered this in a meeting at one point. Where is this? I think we have a recording of this because. Um, um, uh, Oh, what's his name? Yes, um, we have like a long explanation. Yeah. Okay. Great. This is then that's a perfect one to start with. <laughs> yeah, because I think um um uh let's see uh Naim Naim yeah yeah he he never got he he never got the chance to do this um although he wanted to and I don't know if I don't think he's gonna get the chance at this point I haven't heard from him I ha last I heard from him he's you know he's got stuff going on which is great uh, but I don't know if he's gonna get the chance to do this demo um so and since we have plenty of explanation on that I think it's a pretty good introductory one with data flows because uh, it's basically add this one operation and then you know run the data flow this is a perfect one um so so yeah why don't you sort of target that one and then let's go from there sure i will i'll will try try to work on that yep. awesome great cool um and then i will review that that pr sweet cool well um anything thank else you. from anyone yeah thank you yeah, uh, I want to ask what changes need to do in a light GBM PR. I think we just need to update yeah. master on on those. We need to to yeah. merge in master. I have, I, have, I have done this part. Okay, so. great. Um, let's see. Yeah. Let's make a review. Yeah, let's see. Uh, where was it? Okay, great. Um. Oh, did I? Uh, what happened here? Uh, something's failing. Why? Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is because of the H2O ML stuff that I pulled out of there. All right, let's see. 
Let's see. Um, yeah, let's let's we'll, we'll we'll figure this out offline. I think we can probably wrap the meeting now. Okay. Um, cool. Great. Um, thanks, everyone. And I'll uh, I'll talk to you on on Gitter, and I'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks.